Hi, this is Stephen Javits. I'm the producer for the Crossing South TV show on KPBS. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about closed captioning. I know it can be a little bit of a unknown thing or just confusing. And I just want to give some quick tips and tricks and show how we do closed captioning for Crossing South. So basically, uh, what we can do is we can hire out the captions. We, we hire it out, the captions come back in, and what I use is uh, Mac Caption from Telestream to do some slight modifications. A few little tips and tricks. One, it's good to have the first caption to be a paint-on caption instead of a pop-on caption. The rest can be pop-ons, but the first one can be a paint-on. What this does is it erases all the other captions on previous episodes that might be playing in the same sequence on television. And it's uh, one of the requirements of some of the national distributors is to have what's called an erase command. Um, and it's, it's a little confusing and not very clear, but basically by having a paint-on caption and making sure it's about 20 frames in from the first uh, frame of, of the program, it's a good idea. So I'll show you what that looks like here real quick. Um, so the program starts, it paints on, and then the rest of them are pop-on captions. So that's just a little trick that's good to know. Um, another thing that happens a lot, so we have our program, the ProRes file is set up so that it starts the program at one hour. And you can see on the slate, it'll count up from, or it'll be counting up from like 59 such and such. and the actual first frame of program is at one hour. That's usually a good practice. A lot of uh, technical guidelines for delivery will require that, so it's a good practice. Um, and uh, KPBS in particular asks for drop frame time code. And you'll see that usually that means this semicolon indicates drop frame. And if it was just these two dots here, that would mean it was non-drop frame. So that's a good thing to know. When you're setting up your Final Cut project, for instance, you might, you'll, you'll want to make sure that you have drop frame time code. And the reason this is important is because sometimes captions will get uh, out of sync if you don't match that, if that makes sense. So what happens between drop frame and non-drop frame, basically they're about one and a half seconds different from each other after about a, a half hour program. So uh, it's doing something with the calculation to make it slightly different and you just have to make sure you have it right. And this is very important for captioning. Why? Because uh, sometimes you'll be delivering something for like YouTube, say I have the drop frame version here. When I export this for YouTube, it'll actually, and I, if I were to use the same caption files, there'd have to be a few things I'd need to change on this so that it would work on YouTube. One is that YouTube will count it from the very beginning of the video and I'll be cutting off the program slate and the bars for YouTube. So it's important to have this calculated correctly. So what I'm gonna do, I would take off, um, I would adjust the time code here. What I would do is I would I would lower this by one hour because on the YouTube version, it's going to be starting right at zero. So with that little click of a button, we can have that adjusted to exactly uh, zero start time. Um, hold on here, just I just need to deselect a few things. Uh, another thing we have to do on YouTube because YouTube will treat it as a drop frame, uh, a non-drop frame time code. There's a neat little tool here in Mac Caption where you can convert it. So these are good settings. It took a little bit of experimentation. Honestly, it's a little bit confusing, but basically maintain clock times and go from drop frame to non-drop frame. It's a little confusing. What you'll see here is the last caption will be at 4118, and this one is gonna make it convert to 4004. It's an important little conversion factor that has to be done uh, to make the captions time correctly when you're on YouTube or other sites possibly. So it's, it's, it's good to know that this is possible and this software really makes it pretty easy to do so. You might find that you have a bunch of episodes and everything's just kind of drifting when it's online version and the drop frame time code could be why. Now let's see, what else can we talk about here? One thing um, I've discovered recently is uh, the station at KPBS actually asks for a ProRes file with captions embedded. So this was a little tricky, but one interesting thing I found was with Apple Compressor, a $50 plugin that you can get um, from the App Store. It actually allows you to add caption files into a ProRes movie file. So let's make a little, uh, we're gonna basically compress this into the same thing, another ProRes file. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna add um, some captions. So we just go to captions, set, we grab our caption file, but I, I ended up modifying it in Mac captions so that it would line up better in this program. It, for some reason, it, it, it treats it almost like the internet. It has to be, it has to start at zero. 
and it has to be non-drop frame for it to line up correctly. So this is my modified one that I that I already pre-did. And we can check to make sure that these captions are coming out correctly. It looks like it's correct. I don't think you can hear the video, but I can hear it. And I'm confirming that everything's looking like it's lining up. And it is. And one thing to keep in mind, though, that this is only the 608 captions. So this is it's embedding it into the file, but it's only the 608 captions. And so it'll be important that the station knows that we need to when we ingest this into the television broadcast servers, they need to be able to exp uh, change the 608 to make sure that it's going into the 608 and 708 uh, data streams on the final broadcast file. So that's a limitation, but it's but at the same time, as long as everybody knows what's going on and they're they're careful when they're ingesting, that's a way to do it. There is one way that I know of in the world to get a ProRes file with 608 and 78, 708 captions, and that is the more expensive version of Mac Caption from Telestream. It's, uh, it's about $7,000. So if the station can take this file with the 608 captions and ingest it into 608 and 708, uh, it's a lot better because you don't have to worry about getting that super expensive program. There is another way to, uh, to embed 608 and 708 captions into video files. But uh, it's only a f very few specific files. And basically, it's using this Telestream software episode, which is actually no longer available. Fortunately, I bought it a few years ago, and so I still have that. And what it allows you to do is to actually export into uh, XDCAM MXF files with 608 and 708 captions embedded. And there's also a DNX HD MXF file that will allow you to embed captions. Let me show you what this looks like. With the Telestream Switch software, it allows you to view captions inside of video files. It's, there's very few players. The, the only one I know of is this Telestream Switch. It's, about, it's not too expensive. It's like $100 or something like that. Um, and what it allows you to do, let's see. So first, let's look at this finished uh, file, ProRes file out of Compressor. This is uh, an episode of Crossing South, and as you can see, these captions are visible. It's, it's a little bit glitchy. It kind of pauses between captions for some reason. I don't know why, but it's just a characteristic of the software. But what we can do is we're looking, we can show subtitle. We have to make sure this is activated, and we're looking at the subtitle streams or, or the caption sources. Uh, this is, we're, we're looking at the 608 captions, exactly what Compressor said it was doing. If we click on 708, we'll see that there is no captions on the 708 track. It's good. It's just something to be aware of. Um, it might take a second here to load. It kind of has to load all the caption sources. Basically, you can see there's nothing there. Um, so it's just to to know which track that is going to be showing on. So 608, yes. 708, no. Um, here's a file. Here's an episode, a previous episode of Crossing South, the show, that we that I did out of episode seven. Uh, another little trick on that program is that it works better on Windows than Mac. For some reason, Mac was giving me issues of not embedding the captions when I would export. Um, but here, you can see that there is captions on both 608 and 708. We're actually looking at the 708 right now. And this is a very weird kind of specific format that uh, it's like the only one that episode can handle. Is it, This is an XD cam. We can look at the inspector. I think it's an XD cam MXF. Yeah, XDCAM HD 422 1080-60i, MXF at 50 megabits, for, yeah, 422, for, for, for um, interlaced upper field first. So that is one of the very few ways you can actually get these captions into both streams. Um, or you can get the $7,000 Mac Caption software, and you can embed a little bit quicker, a little easier, um, almost kind of like instantaneously, which is cool. But this is what we have available right now. So I hope this video helps you learn a little bit more about closed captioning, how I do it for our TV show, and feel free to contact me with any questions. Just You can reply on this video or just contact me. There's a few different ways you can contact me. One would be through our TV show website, um, crossingsouth.com. Contact us, and you can see our contact information here. This one will go straight to me, crossingsouth at gmail.com. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll look forward to talking with you.